In this video, I'm going to introduce adding a camera into the scene in Maya. For if you followed my videos, a lot of my videos we mainly work through this perspective view. First off, over on the left hand side, you do have different panel layout options. For me, at least whenever I add a camera into the scene, I start to really switch as far as the panel views. The reason being is you really need to be able to see two points of view. You still want to be able to see the overall scene and the elements within the scene, but you also want to have the option to actually look through the camera that you've added to the scene. Cameras can be animated and moved just like other elements inside of a scene. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the camera into the scene. A camera is added by coming up to your tabs up here and you go to rendering. In rendering, you do have the materials and lights, but after your lighting here, after the volume light, you have create camera. So if you click on that, it's going to add a camera onto the grid here. So you can see in my outliner, I have camera one, but then also if I come in and start to move it here, it literally looks like a camera. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about here is actually getting your environment set up, your working environment, so that you can work between the camera and the scene. So what I like to do personally, and it's up to you how you want to lay out your environment, but this is a time now where I'll actually go and switch the panel layout, where I'll go to the two-sided panel layout. Now, normally what will happen here is I'll go ahead and depending on which side I'm working on, I normally like to have the perspective view have a lot more space. However, what you can see here right now is I can still see the camera in the second panel and actually down at the bottom here it's labeled as front Z. I don't want that, I actually want to look through my camera. To switch to that camera specifically, up on the sub menu bar specific to the panel, there's a little camera as your first icon. If you actually right click on that, you're going to get a pop-up menu showing you all the different viewpoints. So by default to this point, we have had the front, the perspective, the side, and the top. But notice because I have camera one in the scene, I can choose to look through camera one. Now you can see if I come over into my perspective view and start moving the camera up and down, you see how it's also affecting the camera view. So now what I can actually see here is I can go through and if I do my animation, Notice that I can preview it in the perspective view. However, if I click over into the camera view, I can see what the camera sees. The other part of this is I can actually start with animating the camera as well. So for instance here, my camera is actually kind of set, right now it's actually sitting right on top of the box. So I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. And I'm actually going to raise it and get a little bit of rotation going on there. Now, some other things that you can work with that I haven't de demonstrated yet is when you have the camera selected, remember that your attribute editor becomes active. We can go in and you can very much control the camera as far as focal length, the angle, etc. So you can see how I can zoom in or I can get, you know, kind of a angle there going on likewise as well. I can change the angle of view as far as how far out do I want it. So I can get some nice wide shots if I need to. So maybe if I take this up to, let's see what 100 looks like. So now, before I even start animating the camera, I can go ahead and preview here and you see that I totally get a different feel to the animation. But what I want to do here is with the camera now, is I'm going to come back. I am going to turn on my auto keyframe toggle and I'm going to set my first keyframe for the camera. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the animation. And what I want to do here is maybe rotate a little bit so that I'm actually kind of following the box. So the box is still in my scene or in my viewport. Keep going through. And maybe I want to kind of bring the camera back here, kind of get it a little bit more centered. 
And then right about at 59, maybe I decide I wanted to start zooming in here. So you can see how my camera goes through the animation process here. Now sometimes one thing to show also is like if I come into the camera viewport, you see how it can be a little bit overkill with animation. This is where from an animator standpoint, you got to start to be a little careful. You don't want to make people sick watching your animations. So oftentimes, you know, less is more whenever you're working with this, you know, having a stagnant camera and working around that and maybe only having it pan left to right versus actually zooming in might be a much better option than actually moving the camera and having objects move simultaneously. But that is the basics of working with a camera. The only other thing to point out is now, whenever you go to actually render a batch, when I come under the display render settings, I'd still go through the same process as far as like what I did previously in a previous video, where I'm setting up as far as what I want to be exported. But in this sense though, I set the frame range but I did not actually have any cameras in my scene here. So leaving it on the perspective view was fine. This time I would want to actually switch it to camera one to get the camera one perspective. So what I'm seeing through the camera lens here, that's actually what would be batch rendered for me instead of the perspective view.